are you scared? You're gonna get scared. Okay, guys. I hit my foot. Oof. What's the word, y'all? Today is another spook night, and you know. I got it blasting, blasting, blasting in the past. You know what I am? Ooh, ooh, yeah. That was my rap. But it's a spook night, and I got another video for y'all. It's not gonna be that long, but it's still a video. Anyways, so it's an animation this time. And I, I feel like I be talking too much. Do I be talking too much? Y'all yeah, be talking too much. I can tell. I'm gonna just get right into the video, y'all. You want to start? You want to start now? Okay, let's start it. Right, right. Um, right now. You ready? Are you ready? You didn't say anything. Okay, we can just go. In all my years of being a police officer in Floyd County, Georgia. I had only experienced two horrifying situations. I'll share with you the worst of the two. It was a slow night, and I was patrolling the dirt roads in my cruiser. At this particular spot, there were tiny woods on both sides of the road. And then it all started. I spotted somebody jumping into the woods on the left. I only saw half of them though, they were gone so quickly. I pulled up closer and shined the spotlight into the woods. I didn't see them. Unfortunately, it was kind of my job to check on things like this, so I hesitantly stepped out from the car and began searching. In a moment like this, I was so ready to pull my gun, as I was actually terrified. And then, the cliched snap of a branch from behind a tree almost made me want to run back to the car, but I instead did my job and called for them to come out. Someone wearing a mask stepped out from the tree. I told them to raise their arms, take off their mask, and come to me slowly. They raised their hands, but they didn't remove the mask. I tried to demonstrate my authority by yelling this time, ordering them to take it off. They looked as if they were about to take it off, when suddenly, he or she looked to their left, and then back at me. I heard footsteps coming from my right. I drew my gun. I yelled at Pause, need to run. He needs to run. If I was a police officer, I would have been like, I quit. <laughs> Time's out. <laughs> Game over. Wasted. I would have quit. Because all this right here, all this, mm, I have authority. And, uh, pew, 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 pew. But I cannot do that. You, like, you got nobody with you. And you at, you, it's nighttime. By yourself and people wearing masks. If you don't go on sweat, if you don't sound like some KK stuff to you, you need to leave. You need to be gone. I'm for real. Like I would have been at least I would have shot him. I'm not gonna <laughs> I would've I would have uh, panic and shot him right right in the stomach. I'm not playing with nobody when it comes to my life, I swear. <laughs> I will panic and shoot you. <laughs> you should have took off the mask the first time I asked. Alright, let's go back. Let's go to the I yelled as loud as I could for everybody to come out with their hands up. You may be thinking, why? Well, if you were in this position, in this setting, you would have been shitting yourself just like I was. Another person wearing a mask walked over, this one holding an axe. I had my gun locked on him. But suddenly, footsteps started coming from all directions. I looked around, and I was surrounded. There were at least ten strangers wearing masks surrounding me almost in a circle, with only an opening behind me. Half of them were armed with axes and the like. I stood there, I stood there, gun raised but not even aimed at anything at this point. I felt like I was going to throw up. One of them, I'm not sure which, finally broke the silence, telling me in a muffled, deep voice, Go away. My heart dropped as he said this, in a way that I knew I was going to live. I turned and ran for the car, driving down the road half a mile, all while calling for backup. As you would guess, the whole group was gone from the woods when a search squad arrived. I have a theory on this, however. 
I believe that what I witnessed was some kind of fucked up secret society that was planning on trapping an innocent passerby, and I think that whoever jumped into the woods as I was passing recognized my car as a police car and tried to hide. Had I not been a police officer, I believe they would have stopped me, led me to the woods, and done whatever this group does for its sick kicks. Um, this story was really, really, really short. I don't know if there's more, because it looked like there is, but... <laughs> Like I said, he ran. Smart move. Good thing he didn't like, you know, how some people be running and then they like come back and investigate like on some some real dumb stuff. Like I'm surprised he didn't do that because it's like that's the type of stuff that be happening in these situations. And people just like being stupid and they like investigating like some dummies. And they come back and die. Period. Game over. We about to see if it's more. So we about to watch this uh the credits right quick. Or I'm At the time of this story, I had already met a total of three people on Match.com. It didn't really work out with two of them, and the third one I dated for four months. After my breakup, I wanted to take a break from commitment and just find something more casual. And so, I matched with a girl named Kylie, who I got along with decently well on the app. She seemed down to just come over to my apartment. Hmm. She seemed down to come to my apartment and hang out for the night. <laughs> I be just be catching myself do dumb stuff, like... Like that. I can't help it. I can't. Can you help me? I'm so, okay. Let me stop being weird. I have my thumb cards. And then hang out for the night. She showed up about half an hour later and seemed really quiet in person. We hung out in my room in the upstairs of my apartment for most of the night. We just talked for a while while watching TV in the background. There were a bunch of awkward silences, but I did my best to fill them with new conversations. In the back of my mind the whole time I was thinking, are we gonna kiss? Does she expect me to move in for the kiss? How do I go about it? But hours of talking later, I started to realize there was something wrong with this girl. She became increasingly more emotionless. She was staring off across the room as she'd talk slowly, talking about increasingly deep and dark things. Then she said something surprising. She thanked me for allowing her to sleep over. Apparently when I said she could come hang out for the night, she meant to literally stay the night. She got off the bed and asked what blankets she could use for the floor. I grabbed a couple blankets and pillows and made a sort of bed for her on the floor. She thanked me and then laid down on her side facing away from me. Y'all can tell me it's good, I like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Yeah, I can't tell me this girl like Michael Jackson. She got the cheekbones and everything. She like... <laughs> Those big cheekbones, bro. If somebody come and look like the walking dead, I'm... <laughs> I'm closing the door. She come here looking like casket ready. She come here looking like Satan. <laughs> she come here looking like death himself. Uh, she ugly as hell. You don't understand. She looks anorexic. Like, she like she ain't eating about a week. Like, I hope you had some pizza too, because this story might turn, turn into a zombie story, because she look hungry. But what I was going to say was, before all the jokes, why, okay, if you didn't mean for her to, like, to spend the night, why didn't you just tell her, you know, that that's not what I meant. But I can understand his point of view, because, you know, if she thought that and she ain't that, she she probably ain't, he probably don't think she that weird right now. Like, to the point where she like, he like, nah, uh-uh, I ain't mean that. I just went to Netflix and chill, you know? So, I mean, he probably thinks she cool. At this point, he probably thinks she okay now, but let's find out. I'm gonna try to. I guessed she was ready to go to sleep. 
I turned off the TV and closed my eyes. We didn't say a single word to each other, and I have to admit, it was very awkward. I fell asleep probably half an hour after shutting the TV, but I awoke randomly in the middle of the night. I sat up and looked down at the floor, and was able to see that Kylie didn't appear to be laying on the floor anymore. I flipped on the lamp and looked around the room. She wasn't anywhere, actually. But just then, I heard a voice downstairs. It sounded like it could be Kylie. All the walls in my apartment are paper thin, so noise travels quite easily throughout it. I quietly left my room and stood at the foot of the top of the stairs, listening for what Kylie could be saying. All the lights upstairs were off, but she was talking in a low voice. I just couldn't tell for sure what exactly she was saying. I figured she was on the phone with someone, but still, I went downstairs to check. I stepped into the dark kitchen, and there she was. But she wasn't on the phone. She was just creepily sitting in one of the chairs facing the wall. She seemed to still be muttering to herself. I was frozen. All I could say was, Kylie? She turned her head to me slowly, looked at me for a few seconds, then turned back to face the wall. I went upstairs quickly to my room and crawled into my bed to call my dad. I had to call at least three times before he finally picked up, obviously sounding concerned. I told him in a quiet panic that some random girl from online was staying the night, and now she was sitting in my kitchen. I went to my room so I can go ahead and call my dad. Who does that? I'm thinking, I went into my room and I went and called 911. She, you see how she turned around? I'm just thinking, well, she turned around and was like, I don't know, it said something funny. And she had like a makeup, ugly makeup on. I don't know, I be thinking weird stuff. But she just sitting there talking to herself. She probably downstairs like this. And then I was wondering, and I was thinking maybe, well, well oh my gosh. And then, yeah, the Barbie died. She probably just down there the whole time like that. What if, imagine so you found somebody in your like your kitchen doing it, just there by themselves. This I can't wait till prom. I'm gonna wear the pink jazz and then boyfriend. Yeah, like I would freak out. I'd be like, girl, the door. But you're not welcome here anymore. I'm calling the police and my dad. This dude's such a baby. Alright, I'm boss. Buttering to herself like a crazy person. He sounded confused as hell, but told me to call 911 if she seemed like she was having some kind of episode to safely get her out of there. Then I looked up, and noticed a figure standing by my bedroom door in the dark. It was Kylie. All I saw was the outline of her skinny body. She stood there for maybe 10 seconds. All I heard was my dad on the other end of the phone saying hello over and over. The next thing I saw was the silhouette of Kylie at my door suddenly charge at me in my bed as she began to scream. She lunged at me and put her hands around my throat, trying to choke me. However, I was able to quickly overpower her and hold her down against the bed. I screamed at my dad to call the cops. I was able to drag the insane girl downstairs by the time the cops came. The cops took her away to fill out a few documents. I think it's safe to say that you should always meet people from websites and apps in a safe, public place first. Give it a round of applause. <laughs> Alright y'all, uh, that's the end of my video. I did not know there was two, there was there were multiple stories in this video, so we're, we'll probably continue the next few later, but right now, that is it for all, and I hope you enjoyed it, because I sure did have fun making, I like, I, I genuinely enjoy making spook nights, but like my outro always says, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your grandma, ah, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your grandma, uncle, brother, sister, cousin, brother, whoever, like, comment, subscribe. Cause it only gets better. It's like an ugly life.